It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. You're cold. Yeah, I think I was holding a cold beer, that's why. No, I'm just, I, my hands, I have hot extremities. Um, ooh, is that uh, what you put on your dating bio for dating apps? No, I hate. I had to have my um, bi friend help me fill it out because I figured he knows both sides of the game. Uh huh. He would know how to help me get a good profile. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, what are the what's the criteria that needs to be filled out in a good <sighs> dating app bio? Well, one, you need a picture with an animal. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then you need to be funny without using an old hat joke. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because uh, it's easy to be like, <laughs> "Why are we all here?" It's like we know why we're here. We're we're sad millennials. Yeah. Um, That's a way to put it. And then uh, you also have to, uh, I don't know. I'm not good at it. I'm really not good. I hate it. Well, it's a whole nother. I hate it because here's here's what I hate. All my life, I've been raised to think that people are worth more than just their outside beauty and not to judge people based, uh, like not to judge books by their cover, right? Mm -hmm. And then I get to my mid-20s and everything is shifted to this online dating thing and it has literally boiled everybody down to purely just their looks. Really? That's what it is. And it's now become like a swipe left, swipe right sort of thing. And like, I'm sure I'm saying no to a lot of really cool people, but um, I mean. But the way that these dating (laughs) apps are designed to play, yeah. The first thing you see is not their bio. The first thing you see is a blown up picture of their face or whatever picture they choose to put out there. Which also blows my mind because sometimes they'll pick like ugly pictures. I don't get it. I don't understand. So is that the other, is that, am I doing it wrong? Are you supposed to like care so little about dating apps that you have to have like the car selfie because you're like, oh, I have to get this profile going right now. Like, I don't understand. This is probably, dating apps are probably testing everyone's vanity, right? I honestly think it's the devil's greatest trick. It's, well, it's working on a shit ton of people. People are getting it though. Like, but that's also what I don't understand. And probably why we have a lot of like chlamydia in our generation. But you know, people just throwing it around, but they're not throwing it. They're not throwing it to me. Well, I mean, right now it's hard to throw it anywhere because of the fucking pandemic. I guess dude. that's fair. You're not supposed to throw stuff in a pandemic. Yeah. No throwing. We got to be no safe throwing. during this. No throwing. Put your mask on. Put your mask on. Stay six feet away. Yeah, what are dates going to be like? Let's say. We walk around the fucking yard like it's Pride and Prejudice, bro. Uh, and hold, that's it. It's super innocent far and classy. Away and walk. I, was out with, uh, I was out with this girl not too long ago. We went to a distillery and um, they're like, you got to take your drinks to go. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. And then he like looked around and realized there was nobody in there. And he's like, you guys want to take a tour? And we're like. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. So it went from taking your drinks to go. It went from you guys got to get the fuck out to like, do you guys actually want to see where we make this booze? You guys want VIP service all of a sudden? And so we got like a private tour of this distillery that was just made in SAC. Uh It was was actually really cool. It was Um, awesome. I went to get sushi with Melissa probably a few months ago. Does your girlfriend know that you did this? Uh, Don't tell Melissa that (laughs) I'm dating another Melissa. (laughs) That's Um, the con. That they're both. To have your mistress the same name as your wife. You just have to make a nickname for your mistress at that point. So that way when she texts you and you're with your wife, she'll be like, oh, that was just me. No, the contact, <laughs> uh, if I were to cheat on uh, Melissa, the contact it would be under is Pizza Hut. N- not Melissa. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That'd be the worst thing to put, actually. Pizza Hut. Babe, why are you talking to Pizza Hut on the phone for three why is, hours? Why is Pizza Hut wet and slimy? Yeah. What do yeah. you? Who's managing their socials right now? I don't know what I just said. Anyways, uh, so you and Melissa were getting sushi. We we were getting sushi uh, a few months ago. And you're about to take a bite and she was like, I have a great idea for a Halloween costume. <laughs> you be <laughs> chopsticks and I'll be sushi. Continue. Um, I'm sorry to keep cutting you off. Oh, no, it's you're, okay. So you we're and excited. Melissa, your we were, real girlfriend, not your mistress. My real girlfriend, not my mistress that doesn't exist. Melissa, I love you with all of my heart. You're the most gorgeous woman that I've ever met. And which Melissa is that? Uh, this is my mistress. <laughs> <laughs> This is terrible. This is a great joke that I hope <laughs> runs forever. <laughs> I cannot pull this bit off in front of her at all. Oh. Uh, but in front of the hundreds of people listening to this podcast, I can't. The dozens. The dozens of hundreds. The couple of people. Yeah, the me and you later on my, tonight. My mom. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, anyway, so you and Melissa were getting sushi. Yes, uh, we were getting sushi, and when we walked in... Uh, we were thinking we were just going to get it to go. The people were really nice and whatnot. And uh, we were all masked up. Everyone was masked up. Until, like, the the chef in the back, he noticed that the restaurant was empty. And he was like, y'all like tequila? And what? we were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not our first choice. He was like, well, we got we got some tequila. You guys want to take a shot? And we were like, 
okay. This is hurting. And uh, <laughs> not even, dude. Like, they, they had customers before getting all their shit to go, but for some reason, we were special. They saw something good in us. And we took shots with these guys. They let us eat indoors. They gave us, like, free ice cream. We finished free the bottle cream. of tequila with them. That's awesome. We were at this sushi spot by ourselves with, with the chefs for, like, Three hours. That's awesome. What and a great experience. Until closing. And they're like, come back next time. And then we, yeah, we, we ordered never, to go. Like, we time. never came back. Well, no, we definitely did come back. Uh, shout out King Jasushi and uh, Concord. But um, um, me and Laura used to go there, actually. To that sushi spot? Yeah. And she's allergic to crab. Sorry to put you on blast like that. Um, but you don't listen. Um, she's allergic to crab and would love to eat crab sushi all the time and just be like no it's worth it and like real crab sushi not <laughs> yeah. imitation crab sushi because no, yeah she was also allergic to that too like dude was she walking around with some benadryl in her hand <laughs> no bro she just toughed it out dude that's why i was like she was also uh i don't i don't need to go much further but like there's I don't a know couple other things she so wasn't dumb. supposed to eat but she would eat them anyways she'd be like fuck it okay is that brave or dumb as a you know, as her very thin line. boyfriend x okay as her ex-boyfriend uh yeah uh it was a very thin line between. So, like, were you like, you go, you you fucking. Well, because I wanted the sushi too, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, I might as well go for it. I don't care. That'd probably be the worst, like dating someone. Shit, you dated a vegan too. That just crosses a lot of stuff off the list too when eating out. That was fine. I mean, I, it, I the hard part about that was um, finding places that, like, after a while, uh, because I would eat so much vegan food, I'd be like, we got to go to a place like an Indian restaurant or like a Thai food place where I can get like chicken pad thai or something. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not asking for the world here. I'm not asking you to go to a steakhouse. No, not at all. Where like her options would be limited. Like but you not. have to get this garden salad. Yeah, fuck it. Those are the fucking worst. I would order. I would, I ate more salads than she did. She hated ordering salads. Really? She didn't she, like salads. She thought salads in restaurants were scams. You know, I know Which a lot is a of whole <laughs> different thing. <laughs> This, this is fake lettuce. No, it's just like, I don't understand. These are like leaves. I wouldn't pay for this. And it's like, wh- how do you eat anything? You have to pay for it. Like, what the fuck is your problem? But I get it. It's why I don't order chicken Alfredo. Why don't you order because chicken Because it's Alfredo? so easy. You can make it at home. Like spaghetti and meatballs. I, don't, I mm-hmm. usually don't order spaghetti and meatballs at a restaurant because it's like, that's something you can make at home. But if you go to like- I got spaghetti and meatballs at home. How about if you go to like an Italian restaurant where but, that's their specialty? Then, then you know, that's yeah. different. But, uh, you know. But you're not going to go to like a, an old spaghetti factory and get their spaghetti? Is probably that too not. much of a franchise? No, I'll probably, well, definitely, yeah. But I'll probably get something like that I can't make at home, like raviolis. Uh-huh. Or like bone marrow. You like bone marrow a I lot. do, I you do. You talked so, about that. <laughs> we, yeah, I know. So like, um, what's that place that we like in Concord? Um, with the Kin Jasushi, with, with the, the new place? The with the whiskey Eureka? Yes. Yes. So they have the that bone marrow appetizer. Yeah. And then they also have like a vegan appetizer. So that place was we'd be like, we need to get everything vegan for her and then I love the bone marrow. And she had no problem with you <laughs> eating uh, well, what bone- you gonna do? I mean, t- well, did you eat it like that? Yeah, yeah. How else do you, you bone sucked marrow? it out of a straw? I mean, like you I've seen the bone. bone marrow like cut in half where you could scoop the marrow. Oh out. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a like a tapenade sort of thing. No, no, no. I like to suck it right out of the bone like a meat straw. Okay, but are you obnoxious with it? If, I, well, it was sometimes. Okay, it depends if you're trying to turn your date on. <laughs> depends if I was trying to make her really upset or not. Yeah. <laughs> Real okay, because I think that relationship ended. Just so, you, in case you're wondering, that means you were slurping too loud, boy. <laughs> I love bone marrow. Uh, girls love quite slurpers. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know either because I I slurp <laughs> at I a moderate noise level. Yeah. Um, Do you think? Okay, for in dating, do you think it is a no-no when a girl eats too loud? Or if anyone eats too loud? I've stopped dating a girl one time because she chewed the entire meal with her mouth open. Really? Yeah. Do you think... What we, is that? Is like, that a nature-nurture the... type thing? I don't know. Maybe a nurture thing. But like it was literally like our second date, and I was like, oh, yeah, this sucks. You wouldn't want to just say, like, yo, shut the fuck up, and then take her chin and push it up? Is that worse? Then I, I would... Is that mm. worse than me just taking my ball and going home? You're the nice one here. It depends. You're the polite one. I mean, I still did make out with her later, but like that's, you know. Yeah. Was she making as much noise that, uh, when you guys were like twisting tongues? You know. You know. You know, oh, what's, you uh, know what's up, bro. You, you don't kiss and tell. I don't, I don't need to go into that part of the story. <laughs> that's for our Patreon. Pew, pew. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what would be worse if you were to just sav it out for the date and never call her back or to be the person to say, hey. You should chew with your mouth la- closed. Okay, chew- that's bu- that, but like this is a full-grown woman. Mm-hmm. She's twenty-something years old. She should know to chew with her mouth closed. I don't need to be telling her. This is how you could do it. Hot take. This is how you could do it. 
You put your phone on the table. From the man who hasn't gone on a a first date in 10 years. In so long. I don't know what a first date feels like anymore. Uh, This is how I'd go about it is I would have my phone on the table. Super subtle. Super smooth. And I would just hit record on the voice memo. And it'd be, you know, slowly and slowly I'd push it closer and closer to her mouth. I'd be like, oh, man. Ten minutes later, I'd be like, oh, man, silly me. I left my voice memo on and then play it in front of her. I see that there are a lot of loopholes in this logic of mine. So I I will take your criticism and then we can leave it at that. I'm just astounded. That's the most, as a actual asshole, that's the most asshole thing you could do. I was hoping you'd say baller. I also imagined you like shoving your phone into her <laughs> mouth also and then be like oh i'm sorry i didn't realize that was in there oh weird it's recording i'm sorry i just couldn't think you properly listen? yeah you want to listen to this it's like listening to a pocket dial right oh gross it's you chewing with your mouth open yeah shut the fuck up or else i'm leaving you with the check you know i guess if you didn't like her mm-hmm. i right? guess because so. uh, i've been with girls who like i didn't like and then like it turned bad and i was like yeah you can leave do you say that or well, like there has to be a finesse particular. to it Okay, my question is because I've never, I've never like had a. This is a lot. Of, this is very revealing. I don't know. This is very revealing. This I don't like, think we've we haven't welcomed the baddies or anything. We're hey, just welcome, welcome, welcome to highly irrelevant deep into my dating life. Yes, into your dating life and my vicarious dating <laughs> life through you, because I can't do that no more. This is us. Um, I uh, do you? Th- I I don't. I've never been. At, in a date where I'm like, oh, I got to get out of here. Mm, I've Abort? You've never had an abort? No, I've I've never. It's always gone You've like... You've never s- had an abortion? <laughs> I've never had an abortion. Calm down. It's a pro-lifers. joke. Pro-lifers. Um, or pro-life. whoever you are. But I've never Pro-choice. had to do it uh, because it's always went pretty well. Like well enough for us to finish the date. Nice. Good job, bro. Yeah. Um. Well, you know... It's a numbers game, bro. Not everybody can hit a home run every single time. You've had to abort like multiple times? Yeah. I remember going on dates like with girls a couple of times in a row and then realize like, oh yeah, I'm not feeling this. You know what I mean? And like um, sometimes you hang out with a girl and then like it's just, not, it just you know, you thought it was going to click and it just doesn't click quite right in that moment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, Has it ever been vice versa where they- I'm sure girls have not. Yeah. I can almost 100% guarantee. No, but like ended the date early. Like has it oh. ever gone so Ari that it, it would have to end early? Because I only see it in movies when girls are like, uh, I got to go powder my nose and <laughs> sneak never through back. the bathroom no, window. I've never had that, but I did have a girl one time like, I want to leave. And I was like, okay. And she was, and then she was, you know the story. And she was like, you told me you'd pay for my Uber. And I was like, all right, here's, here you go. Oh, yeah. Bye. Well, that's a whole different thing. That's Kick rocks. That's not like a, like, hey, I met you. We met up for- uh, No, that was a random encounter. Random encounter. That's but different. The, but exact, But see, random encounters, I would be more inclined to be like, I don't give a fuck because mm-hmm. it's a random encounter. I think nowadays the dating game- By the third game, date, if she's running off on you, you're, you're pretty much fucked up. Yeah, there's something that has to be fixed, right? Not your personality. Um, No, you just be confident in who you are and- No. No? Fake it. Fake it and be whatever they want so that you can fool them for as long as you can until they get tired of you. Because listen, love is a chemical reaction that fades over time and eventually everybody leaves. There are girls that'll like you for saying that. There are girls that probably (laughs) are fine with like, yeah, I agree with what you're saying and I'll mold you into whatever I want to be. Try and mold me, baby. Not too long ago. (laughs) What a funny thing to say. Try and mold me, baby. Uh, Not too long ago, uh, Melissa and I, we're getting some like uh, food on the street, and this like homeless guy came up. <laughs> that sounds like we went to a shelter. Um, we were getting. So we were in line for food, and the guy behind us started talking to us. It was COVID, so we can't like d- dine in, so we just had to wait on this outside and wait for our food to come out. But this homeless guy came up to us and saw that like uh, we were cuddling up on each other, and he talked to us for uh, like a really long time. He was very nice, but yeah, he, that's 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 fun. He that's invaded happened. our bubble just a little bit too much, but he was like he kept on asking us like. Uh, who who wears the pants between you two? And I, he kept on saying, both y'all, both y'all keep wearing the pants. And he asked us that five times. He's telling you guys to not have sex. Both y'all keep your pants on. Keep both your, of y'all got pants. He's both speaking y'all literally. Have pants. Uh, I remember one time I was with a girl and she was wearing an A's hat. I was wearing a Dodgers hat. And uh, the A's and Dodgers were playing that weekend. And I don't know how this homeless man knew that, but he was like, big game this weekend. And I was like, how do you know? 
<laughs> like wow and he was like uh, what do you guys do in the game plays and i was like oh she doesn't actually understand baseball so do you think he like listens to the radio and he's just caught up with sports you could be homeless and like just like really yeah in tune i with mean society you got still. free time i assume to like keep up with the sports this homeless guy uh shout out raymond uh do you remember his name yeah he, he told us his name he's very sweet they always tell me that name but i flush my brain every night that's an old restaurant trick uh, oh because you're talking to so many strangers you can't just, like, hold all of that information flush my brain in 30 seconds if, an, if you're an asshole um, which makes sense. You don't want to. You don't want to retain yeah, that. Don't take that with you. But yeah, this guy Raymond had a a fucking cell phone. He was telling us like he was homeless. Yeah. Hey, he, you know that's pretty common actually. And he had service, meaning that he's like he has. Was it a smartphone? It was a smartphone. Yeah, man. I mean, that's the thing though. You know, sometimes you got to think about it this way though. How much of his life has to have that smartphone? You know what I mean? Mm. How much of our lives definitely revolve around the fact that we have a smartphone or things that we could not do, like uh, work schedules are sometimes posted through apps and internet connections and emails and things. It's just sometimes you can't afford a computer. Sometimes you can't afford an iPad. A phone with a eight gigabyte plan from Ghetto PCS is the best you can do. And if it works, it works. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, it's really what modern... Uh, the modern day has really changed for sure, everyday for sure. life into even with working, even with this whole pandemic, um, it's it's going to change the workflow of a lot of different types of jobs. Now that companies are realizing, oh, shit, we don't, we don't have to pay an office building. We don't have to pay for a workspace. We don't have to pay for a break room. And like with all these snacks to uh, provide for our employees, people uh, can work from home. And the best part is that they want to work from home. A yeah, lot of people. people. Yeah. Uh, except for the people that statistically are... like there's a quite a bit of people but like also i just think the business isn't if business is going to be misstepped if they think that's the way to do it like they're going to have to have the option of both because some people are going to want to want the office environment and some people aren't yeah. like i think uh, it would be foolish for google to be like no more google plantation or it's not a plantation what do they call it campus <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much a plantation the Google I campus. don't know, dude. I'm pretty Can't... sure. Well, from whatever it is, it's a Google plantation. But uh, um, well, I don't know what you're reading from, but I just will. Just the American media. That's the flaw within itself, dude. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, but yeah, it's. I, I think I'm the type of dude that needs a balance of both. Like yeah, I've told sure. you, a lot of people have said, like Christian, you're so outgoing and you're so smell. extroverted and you smell good. Oh, no one's ever told me that I smell bad. I tell you, you smell bad all the time. Yeah, but you say like you say like a fifth grader insult, like you you stink. Yeah, but dude. I mean it. No. Oh, have you actually smelled me and really think that I smell bad? No, because I plug my nose and breathe through your mouth only when you're around me. In the car before I come inside, I fill my nose with Vaseline. <laughs> just to prep yeah <laughs> damn dude uh well before that insult gets worse um but yeah i think i'm the type of dude that needs that balance where i'm like i i want time to myself but after a certain period of time i do crave companionship mm. i do crave like uh being able to like shoot the shit with some people i mean that's what this podcast Sounds has like, really yeah. become you know like yeah I, I go to work and like i interact with the coworkers there but but you don't like them it's I love they're cool they're cool some of them listen to this tell the truth uh fuck this person and that person nice give us the list it's uh, written here in ink <laughs> yeah it is um but really this is what it is this is like where a lot of my my social mu muscle does kick in when I'm having a conversation that's being recorded for thousands <laughs> dozens <of people. laughs> a couple <laughs> um uh, man this has been fun and very revealing um. If you could take Melissa on a first date again, mm. where would you take her? Do I have the resources that I have now? Right now. You met Melissa today. Ooh. Is COVID a thing? No. Okay, would, cool, cool, cool. Because that ruins the game. That ruins everything. That, that ruins the game. Probably like... January 2020. Ooh, okay. You, met, you meet Melissa. Here, here's how it happens. You're at Farm and Flower, mm -hmm. right? You're ordering a coffee. Uh, and you're sitting waiting for your order, and then they say, uh, one special non-fat pumpkin latte, and then uh, you go to reach for it, and she's also reaching for it, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't uh -huh. realize. And you're like, that, that must be yours, because mine's with almond milk. And she goes, mine's also with almond milk. Are you going to just faint the entire picture? Until... Of how you met. Okay. Of that, and, and you're like, oh my God, hi, I'm, I'm Christian. She's like, I'm Melissa. Mm -hmm. And then the guy's like, here's your drink, sir. Uh, and then like, uh, that's how you guys meet. Okay. Um... At that point, I'm going to, 
I'll scan what she's wearing. I'll, I'll look for like a lot of details uh, with uh, with her to see if like if there's anything I could start conversation with. Right. Okay. okay. Um, so you know, Melissa, what she would wear on a normal day. What would you say? <laughs> the first thing that pops to mind is like, you're short, but that's because I know her so well that I could get away with it. But um, but you know what? When you're flirting with girls, sometimes that's what you say. I'll probably be like, damn, girl, like, where'd you get that jacket or some shit like that? <laughs> Which, knowing her, she'd be flattered, maybe. Good, 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 good. Um, You're using your inside knowledge. I like it. I'm trying so hard. Yeah, this is such an interesting question. So, How- you, so you compliment her and then where do you take her? So, you, so you've already met her. She's already agreed to go on a date. Okay. You say, I'm going to pick you up at eight. Uh, somewhere, okay, um, somewhere in Napa. Uh, she loves wine. Wow. She loves wine. So it might have to be a little bit earlier than you eight. You know this already. Right? Let's say like let's say like a sunset. So I, we could go wine tasting somewhere. And then afterwards, we could get like some dim- dinner and top it off with some drinks. And then like uh, I'll take her home afterwards. Wow. To her home. The date is drinking and then you go get drinks after. Yeah. You're but trying this to is... bang this woman. No, this you is. You are trying to. <laughs> this is hard. You're trying to sleep with her. Hell yeah, dang. Um, I do think that's more of like a third date. You think so? Wine tasting for the evening and then going out and like that's that's definitely more of a third-ish date. Here, I'll list off like all of my past first, first date. You got to go kind of yeah. You got to go easy with it. I'm uh-huh. a fan of the movie and and dinner. Uh huh. Because I love movies, and it's two hours of you just shut the fuck up. See, a lot of people will contest. Well, because well, two hours of you not talking. Yeah, you guys aren't really getting to know each other. You are getting to know each other yeah, by. But, but I like movies. You like movies, so <laughs> she learns one fact about you. But then we could talk about the movie after. After, so that's if she. So you have to make sure that she's patient enough to sit through a movie if she even likes movies or that movie enough to definitely have a gone, good time. definitely gone out with a girl who like doesn't like movies. Uh huh. And I would be like, well, too bad. We're gonna go see John Wick two. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the first one. Doesn't matter. He killed everybody. Well, I, I wanted to watch it. You spoiled it for me. It's not spoiled. But I don't like violence. <laughs> uh, and then John Wick 3, I also tricked a girl to go in there with me. That one didn't work out. She walked out. It sounds like you like John Wick more than you like these girls. Honestly? Probably. <laughs> That's not an incorrect statement. Keanu Reeves is a dope guy. And those movies are fucking... Mwah. I'll tell you, one movie that will always remind me of a date that I went on was is Toy Story 3. Um, the Did girl you that cry I... on the date? No. Did the girl? No. It oh, was so but, what happened? So, <laughs> okay, so tell the story, then I'll stop guessing. This is a girl I had a, I had a crush on her in middle school. Mm-hmm. Um Wow, old time. Yes. Uh she's getting she's getting married and engaged, so congratulations. Congratulations to you. I'm kidding. That's <laughs> Whoa. I'm kidding. I'm now fucking say her kidding. name. <laughs> man, man, man. Oh, I'm not saying I know who it is. Um but <laughs> Uh, so it wasn't really labeled as a date, but since she was my middle school crush and, uh, you were very excited. I was excited. We, we hadn't spoken in maybe like a year or two, which is an eternity in grade school. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I decided to just like, uh, okay, this is how I started talking to her school? again. What? Was this post high school? Yes. This oh. was, uh, wow. Weird. I didn't know this. This is probably like a uh, 11th grade that I went on this date with this girl and it wasn't Whoa. labeled as a date. This is how I uh, rekindled our friendship after we stopped talking in the eighth grade. Um, we had PE at the same time, but different teachers, but we had run the mile at the same time. So, seeing so she that, wasn't athletic at all. No, she was more athletic, but this is the trick. She Every second lap, uh, I would just slow down and then pick up my pace with her when she would catch up. And so it'd be like, oh, we're on the same lap. And then we'd just talk while we're jogging and trying to finish the mile. And then, uh, but she'd finished it in half the time that you did. Yes, she's lapping you. No, because I never <laughs> finished. So <laughs> I do about three laps and just be like, okay, That's that was great. a mile. That's great. I asked her out. I didn't ask her out. I say like, let's hang out. And uh, we didn't have. Uh, I didn't have a car at the time, but she did. Mm. And so she had to pick me up from my house. Yeah, I, I, I played that move in high school too. Yeah, uh, and then like uh, she brought me to her place. We made red velvet cupcakes. Wow. We, and we watched Toy Story 3. That's a very high school date. And it's a, yes, but a great date nonetheless. And we were doing that thing oh, where we were like, super date. we would kind of like uh, laugh in the middle of it or like during the emotional parts, like uh, our hands would move and uh, the hands would move closer to each other. Um, and like, it was just like, and whatever she was thinking, it could be completely different. But like for me, having a crush on this girl for so long, like any 
physical contact is like a win in my book. My heart's already going faster just thinking about it. And then uh, after the movie, it's like uh, probably like 11 p.m. And she like drives me back to like my place. And the timing of this date or whatever the hell you want to call it was perfect because this day landed on the day before my birthday, the night before my birthday. So when she dropped me off, she didn't just drop me off. She was just like, no, let's stay in the car. I want to stay with you until it hits midnight. Damn. And just talking for like, and let me tell you, this is probably my very first real date because prior to this, I never was a, hung out alone with a girl <laughs> and I, girls didn't That's really awesome. like me back. That's fun. And uh, she eventually just, uh, just uh, so we, we hung out in that car for like uh, maybe an hour and then it it hit kiss 12. Her? Did you kiss her? No, I didn't. We did one of those weird hugging things where like after like, you hug, you're like kind of holding hands. D- could you have, do you think now looking back, maybe you could have gotten a little smoocher? I should have gone for it. I should have shot my shot, dude. I think, yeah, I think you should have. And I, I live my life in regret. Not that it would have changed the course <laughs> of my life. Your I love where I'm at. Would be Melissa, I love you. You're the most beautiful wow. woman that I've ever met. Is this when you met original Melissa? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, the next day on my birthday, I met Melissa. And she was standing out there and she was like, you single? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I, I kind of got a thing, but it's nothing. I really don't know if the other person thought it was a date or anything. But to me, it was nonetheless a very special moment. That's, a, that's it sounds like it. It's wholesome. That, uh, you know what? That's a very nice story. I, I would love to make fun of you for it, but I know you and her. And it actually makes me very very happy to know that 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 moment happened it was it's a beautiful moment you know um she said she wouldn't sing happy birthday for me when it hit midnight and i I was like okay but then when i got home and like 10 minutes later i got a recording i got a voicemail she told me not to pick up and it was her singing happy birthday that's adorable yeah that is like rom-com level i hope she never hears this that's this i mean would she no i don't think so yeah probably not unless someone knows her and like sends her the link? I mean, I didn't know the story, and I'm one of your best friends. Yeah, I mean, I probably have spoken about it, but not to this level of detail. And not on a recorded medium. Yeah, you know those moments when you... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to cut all of this out. I thought that's what you were going to say. Edit. <laughs> Editing <laughs> all of this. Uh, Just it, neural lies. This is one of those moments where like you're hey, like... Hey, I felt pretty open in the beginning of the episode, so it's good to know that you feel open too. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, uh, why the fuck did... Why did, why did I, I say this? That? Oh! But I... I guess it feels good. This is this is what this platform's for. People want to get to know us. I mean, it's not like I haven't bared my soul. It's like honestly, if you want to know anything about me, uh, just listen to any of our older older episodes. Really, really, it's like like I don't hide anything on this shit. It's interesting doing this with you because my character is honest me, <laughs> just an exaggerated honest version of you. It's interesting doing this podcast with you because um, I do have to gauge about like when you want to be transparent and vulnerable and when you don't want to be because sometimes you'll throw you'll just say like a throwaway line and like i don't know if we should dive deep into that topic um i I think if i'm throwing a line out i'm usually gonna be okay like that see like well Well, because now i'm trying i'm thinking back like i honestly can't think of anything where if i'm making a joke about it or something it's not true i do make one liner sometimes i want to leave it at that mm -hmm. okay you're right you do a good job of Trying to gauge it. Reading it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, because looking back, I can't think of any time that you step, misstepped. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, maybe you've misstepped in the fact where I'm like, no, 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 I want you to make a joke, but then you don't, but it's like, ah, whatever, it'll come back around. Yeah. It'll, it's like a boomerang. It always comes back. Yes, it does. It does. You'll make it pretty obvious, but sometimes I still play it safe. Yeah. And, like, who cares? <laughs> we could fucking edit this. That's the other thing. Although, you know, sometimes we make marks for editing, and then I'll go back and listen to it, and we never took those edits out. We're just like, oh, I guess that's that's that. Guess everybody's going to see me looking on the internet for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Terminator episode. Thanks for that. Yes. Um, check out Terminator, our <laughs> last week's episode. There's a two-minute bit where I get stuck looking at Arnold Schwarzenegger's height that I thought we were going to edit out, but apparently not. That's, uh, you know, I, I've said some stuff. <laughs> Where it sounds like I am from the Philippines because the English is so, so jumbled bad. up, and I'm like, Your I, idioms are, are very confusing. Yes, because no one, no one was around in my childhood to give you good idioms. Yeah, that's why you got to watch 1920s films. That's where I got all mine from. <laughs> I go a bit yeah, too far, <laughs> and they're all silent films. <laughs> I'm getting no idioms from these silent films. <laughs> these are just idiots. Hey, <laughs> but I am a. You know what? You want to learn good stunts, like be a stunt man. Uh huh. Those OG silent films, bro. 
You took uh, theater combat? I did. How is that? It's pretty fun. Not that I'm like, I guess, more active. Hey, let's take acting classes. I would love to. To do acting classes with you again? Fuck yeah, bro. You, are we going to be the two bad boys again? You were the bad boy. You know you were the bad boy in that class. You were the bad influence on me. Uh, for I you baddies out there. I was only ever late because of you. <laughs> I only ever got separated because of you. Uh, for People you baddies out there. me for your antics. Um, we, Alejandro and I, took uh, community college acting classes together. One of my brief stints in community college. We were... Uh, Insep- we were inseparable but really though like uh, we were I really was... good friends at the time and like i think um that was an advanced drama class did we take beginning drama together too only intermediate and advanced so we took intermediate together yes and then was it the same teacher for both yes and that's so we... we got pretty close to that teacher that's right and then so the second by the time the second year came around she already knew what kind of shit yeah. we would the first year the teacher was like kind of feeling us out she didn't know how i guess close and how she didn't realize how good of friends we were. And she didn't realize we were, she was going to see us like, the next year. <laughs> and and yeah. But but she did see that we had talent in acting. And she yes. did try to foster that, which I really appreciate and like for of yeah. her. Um, um, but she but didn't man, want to separate us because we were distracting ourselves we from learning. We would just laugh. I, I remember the time, the one time we were like crying laughing because she was talking to somebody and she had her hand on their back and their hair, her hand just slid just like a little bit down, right? Just like a little yeah. bit. And we both saw it, but we saw it as like going from the hand from up here to like down, down here. Down to the hip. And we both like just lost it. Well, because... Like, do you, you remember I know exactly crying, what you're talking about. laughing. I've never cried laughing. That was like <laughs> a, one of the moments where I was literally like... and then you're, And then the worst part was... Now we're trying to stifle it. Yes. Now we're trying to hide it. So now it's even funnier because mm-hmm. we're trying to like not make a big deal about it. And then it's like we finally we finally calm down and then we're like look at each other. And I, I will never forget after she separated us, we both finally calmed down. And then I just looked at you from across the room and we both just you did your like your Dude. your hand laugh thing that you do. Oh, like. I when I put my hands together like that. <laughs> What's dangerous oh, about having man. best friends in the class, even re- it's worse if you do separate them because now you're making these like subtle faces. Now, now at they each have other. space. To, now everything's bigger. Those are the worst <laughs> moments when you're trying to hold in a laugh. A big fear of mine is laughing. At a funeral? Yes. Did you ever see that Mary Tyler Moore episode? No. Did you ever watch the show Mary Tyler Moore? No. Great sitcom about this woman who moves to the city. Very power forward. Well, My mom loved it. Uh, she goes to a funeral for a clown. For <laughs> the, a clown? For a clown. And uh, because the clown got um, stepped on by an elephant. Be- oh, my God. Because the clown's name was Peanut. Oh, my and the God. the elephant thought it was a peanut. Yeah. And so she's there and she realizes, like, how silly it is. So the whole episode is her laughing at the funeral. Mm-hmm. It's great. We'll have to check it out. That reminds me of the type of person I would be. And what I do have a fear of is that one How I Met Your Mother episode where Marshall... Uh, goes to the art gallery and drops all the skittles. Exactly, that's a hundred percent you, Christian. That's me. Also, I love how I met your mother. Anybody can test me. All I need to see is just ten seconds of any episode, and I can tell you exactly what happens. You you know the series like the back of your hand. Um, but that'd be me. I would be the type of person to drop a skittle, bend down to pick up the skittle, and then, drop the rest of the skittles, and then like not and then stand back up and then have the rest of the bag fall out. Mm-hmm. Oh man! But I think I that's think episode, I've learned to try to like. Not uh, drop your skittles. Make that. I'm still I think you'll be able to that. make the joke about it, though. Yes, I try to make like a face, like, "Oh, you can't forgive me. I'm I, sorry." I'd be like, "Who did that?" Yes, <laughs> it'd be harder with you. Like, if you were the skittle dropper, people would be like, "Alex." More so than with me, they'd be like, "I guess." Chris, no, I get away. With, I get away with a lot, and you know that's true. Yeah, you do. I get away with, and and like it surprises us. You've you've even seen me like where like I'll say something and like we'll be walking away, and like I can't, I can't believe. I, I said that and like it, it worked out. It bewilders me sometimes. I get away with some some outlandish things. I say some horrible, but you know, here's the thing is like people expect me to say the horrible thing. So that's why I can get away with saying horrible things. Yeah. You kind of, you've pushed your own boundaries. Yeah. So people's expectations of you, like if I were to say half oh, of the things Alex. that come out of your mouth, yeah. if I were to say that people would be surprised. Yeah. People would think that I'm not Christian anymore. Like uh, like when are, we first started recording and you were cussing a lot and I was and people were like, what is this, Alex? And I was like, I, I don't even really know. I don't know why I was cussing a lot. And I wasn't at all. The, you, the first like four episodes, I didn't cuss at all. At all. And now it's more organic. Like we'll say it hopefully in we context. We just like call people the worst. The worst things. 
This is the most offensive Bath. podcast. <laughs> Bath? Do you remember that from Rugrats? No. They're thinking about they're talking about bad words and he's like, I know a bad word. Bath. Because babies don't like baths. That, is there what it is, is there dude. Is. When's the last time you took a bath? Actually, um, I'm a big fan of baths, but uh, I'm just a big man, so it's tough for me to find bathtubs that fit me. Mm. Um, so when I do, I like to use them. Uh, when I lived in Irvine, I had a bathtub that fit me. I used to take a bath all the time. I, if I like woke up at, excuse me, at like three in the morning, yeah. I'd go take a bath. Why not? Who the fuck cares? I wasn't paying for water, so. Um, but actually, the last time I took a bath was about two or three weeks ago. My parents were out of town. I used their bathtub. Nice bubbles. I don't fit in it. No, no bubbles. No bubbles. Why? Well, I'm not eight years old. What's wrong with bubbles? Uh, well, I'm an adult. You can be grown and Epsom have salt. bubbles. Epsom I'm, th- I'm there for my muscles. I'm not there for games. I don't bring toys either. Okay. I do bring my uh, iPad, though, and watch Netflix. Okay. That's a grown-up toy. That's a way to do well, it. Well, I mean, that's one way to put it. Glass of wine? No glass of wine? No, I don't enjoy drinking liquor in the hot tub. Candle? No candle? No, no candle. I got a thing that stops me from having a candle in the bathtub. You know what bothers me about certain baths? I'm I'm fine with taking a bath here, but if I were to take a bath like elsewhere, I'm very I do like hotel bathtubs. Hi, yes, if the hotel's very nice. But yeah. I'm very hyper aware of like my environment. Is like is there mildew around me? Because like when you take a yeah. bath, you have to sprawl out a bit, right? Yeah, and I'm not talking like uh best western bathtub. I'm talking about like when you go to Vegas and get like a nice room or when when uh we got a, a cabin in Tahoe for my brother's bachelor party, there was a really nice bathtub in that house. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like Motel Six bathtub. Although some Motel 6s are quite hidden. Dude, yes. Come on. We went to Disneyland. Okay, first of all, with I've, a group of I've been back to that one three times since that, that, same one? since that trip. And we went right after they had fixed it. Like we oh. went like, I, we must have gotten there the month they renovated that Motel 6. Mm-hmm. Because every time I've gone there since then... It's been like disgusting, pro- progressing like a Motel Six would. Wow. Yeah. Bad. I would no still go. I would still like because it, it's cheap and it's right right down the street from Disneyland. But you also got to remember you're at a motel. Like I'm not bringing my laptop. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm also getting that room because I leave my booze out and yeah. All you my get other what you're things. paying for. Really, you do get what you're paying. You're for. going to Disneyland. You got to you got to save money somewhere. Yeah, definitely. You want it's not going to be food for me. You're buying all the foods at Disneyland. At least, yeah. If I can. Is Disneyland still open right now? Do they have a bunch of regulations going on? I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm not the I'm not the Disneyland expert. I believe Jordan is our resident Disneyland expert. Uh, shout out to Jordan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything. I don't know what things are changing once again because things are getting worse with more people going out and more people being dumb and more people just like getting sick. Um, and I wish you guys the best if you do get sick. But please survive. Um, but also, like a bunch of like our local counties, including our very own, is hitting purple tier. And that's uh, that's two away from Black Belt. <laughs> that's a weird thing to look into. That's uh, an accomplishment, dude. Um, uh, yeah, man. I uh, I miss Disneyland because I enjoy Disneyland. Yeah. And the last time I was there, I got to fly the Millennium Falcon. Which is so dope. I but told I've you. talked about it in the past. It's no secret. I told you recently that you asked me, like, what's my favorite thing to do at Disneyland? And you, like, <laughs> scoffed at me when I said, I just like walking around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, what's there's no line. I do when you like walk walking around. around. I do also enjoy like walking around, but that's not my favorite part of Disneyland. That's top five. It's like an extra thing, really. It's not your it's priority. It, it's it's honestly top five, mm-hmm. maybe five. But like, but Indiana Jones dr- flying the Millennium Falcon, uh, eating popcorn is very is like number three on my list at Disneyland because Disneyland popcorn is the best crack. popcorn. Straight up crack. The way it smells. And, and then pineapple Dole Whip and then walking around Disneyland. More crack. The, so th- that's my top five in Disneyland. That's solid. That's a solid top five. What's the longest you'd wait in line for a ride that you really liked? The absolute longest. It, it really depends on the ride and, and how new it is. If it's a brand new ride, it's the first time I'm ever going to ride it. Up to two hours. Two hours. Okay, that's reasonable. But I'm not going to wait an hour for Space Mountain. Yeah. I've been on Space Mountain way too many times. It has to be for something that um, you uh, love a lot. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean, I'd wait up to about 45 minutes. Yeah. Right? 45 is a, is a decent amount. Like uh, Indy, I'd wait about... But I'm going to get fast passes for most of those. Yes. You have to be smart. It's crazy that when you're in Disneyland, you... You have to have a... There's a strategy. For those of you who don't know, if you've never been to Disneyland uh, and you're planning your first trip to Disneyland... You really got to do your homework because there is, it's not just like Bush Gardens or whatever the fuck bumfuck poor white guy theme park you have in <laughs> the Midwest. This is fucking 
Disneyland, all right? This is made for the stars of Hollywood. Yes. Okay? So you need to prepare as if you are one of those liberal Jew bastards in Hollywood. I don't know why I made it. I don't know why I'm pissing everybody off. Yeah, you're but just making more and more enemies. Here's the thing, guys. I want less people to go to Disneyland so it can be more room for us. Yes, because... So if I can offend everybody and get them to hate Disneyland. Or also, this pandemic is just making... That's going to that's gonna make it real easy. I did learn, now, to save myself a little bit, uh, everyone thinks that uh, Walt Disney was an anti-Semite, didn't like Jewish people. Mm-hmm. Right? You've heard that rumor. Yeah, that I've is, heard it from you. <laughs> that's not true. I recently learned that that's not true. Um, he, he was actually, um, well, he wasn't an anti, anti-Semite. He was anti-union, and very much so. He did not like the unions of America. And so the unions started the rumor that he didn't like Jewish people. Oh, and that, that's how that became a thing. Crazy when you're like a celebrity or someone with a lot of power mm-hmm. um, that the smallest rumor can taint your reputation. And like become almost fact. Even if it's, yeah, never confirmed. Even if it's never confirmed or if there's little to no evidence, it could still tarnish your reputation or the other way you could do some things really really bad and nobody will ever find out i also recently learned i'm i'm a big ford ford motor car uh fan but i just found out that ford one henry ford was a huge fan of adolf hitler and also was the number one builder of trucks through 1939 mm-hmm. and in fact when world war ii ended got paid almost 60 million dollars from the u.s government because they lost so much money by not being able to sell cars to the germans holy shit so henry ford the German uh, military was a big customer, number Based one customer of trucks. Ford. The the Opel company, which was owned by Ford, made all of the trucks for the Nazi regime between See, that's 36 wild. and 39. It's crazy as mainstream consumers or a lot of people just in Henry the Ford, modern day. Just to get this out there, Henry Ford was an actual anti-Semite. He did actually hate Jews. That's, that, that is well, a Well, if fact. he's a big fan of Adolf Hitler, <laughs> it kind of goes hand It's kind of hard hand, not right? to also, yeah. Yeah, you can't just be like, well, I liked Hitler, I like Hitler for but, his- But not that thing. For his economic his views. I loved his style. <laughs> yeah, he had a great stash. And that's all I like about um, um, But, like, it is crazy that um, modern-day consumerism can just occur without any background research or any knowledge of what that's of why, where it's coming from. That's right? why I think it's so silly sometimes when stuff does come out and people are like, well, I'm never going to wear North Face again. And right? it's like, well, who cares, bro? Or a lot of people just saying, like, Jeff Bezos is a fucking billionaire, billionaire yeah. asshole. But you know what? Guess but I'm going to buy something from Amazon right exactly. now. That's my whole thing. I mean, I recently watched a documentary about euthanasia, and uh, that's why Whoa. I buy Nikes. Really? Yeah. Uh, youth in- <laughs> I was That's r- really good. Thank you. Thank the you. Crazy- I've, I've been working on that bit for a while now. I haven't worked <laughs> or I haven't heard the word euthanasia in a long time. So me hearing euthanasia and also understanding what it is, what the word is broken down. What a crazy like half oh, a second him? for me, man. Oh, man. That's uh, like, for um, anybody who doesn't get the joke. My joke is euthanasia is when they kill old people. And the youth in Asia are the people who make Nikes. The small, little people. <laughs> so, um, you know. Bless their souls. Um, uh, of help the Nikes. Them. Yes. Um, Look at you making puns. You don't even know it. Bless their souls. You're talking about Nike. Yes. I didn't even know it, dude. I'm rubbing off on you. This is what comedy is, baby. Baby. Welcome Let's to the show. Let's make money. Booth. If you're listening to this and you want to locally sponsor us. If you're listening to this, um, Bobby Lee. Kali- <laughs> Kalila. Um, that's a good thing to talk about. I um, would like to, yeah, I want to bring it up um, because I, I, I don't want to do an improv scene, but I want to talk to you about this because I want to, I want to kind of um, um, feed the feed the flame, so to speak. Okay, let's do it. Okay. I'm, I'm never even burning. You're burning, bro. But right now, I'm on fire, I didn't realize baby. How, how hot you were burning when I came in today. You held the flame down to like a small candle. Uh-huh. And then you're like, let me show you something. You pulled out your laptop. Um, and to my disappointment, it wasn't porn, but it was better. <laughs> it was you, Christian, featured on the Tiger Belly Patreon channel. Correct, correct. Um, singing your beautiful little Filipino heart out. Thank you. For your favorite comedian and his wife. Yes. Uh, so for those of you that don't know what Tiger Belly is, Tiger Belly is a very popular podcast hosted by um, Bobby Lee, uh, a famous comedian that you guys might know from Mad, Mad TV. TV. Um, and you look other like things. a man. Uh, you look like a man. Uh, Miss Swan. Bobby Lee, right? No, that's oh, Miss Swan. Fuck. Who plays an Asian person, uh, played by Alex Borstein, by the that's, way. Yes, yes. Um, Lois but, Griffin. 
Bobby Lee, one of the best podcasters out there right now, one of the most popular podcasters out there right now. He, that guy's really into like singing shows like The Voice and American Idol. So he and his uh, longtime girlfriend, Kalila, they threw a singing competition for their podcast, and the winner gets to sing the outro for their podcast. God damn, I hope you win. And I hope I win too. So I submitted this like three months ago, mm-hmm. back in like August. And I thought nothing of it. I told you about it. I was just yep. like, I just got to shoot my shot. Like, uh, worst case scenario, they don't see it, um, but I still got practice. Yep. Best case scenario, they see it, and it, I win. Right and now. It, and you got better than best case scenario. They, Not only did they see it and watch it, but you were the grand finale of that episode. They saved you for the very end. Yes. They loved you. Yes. They were absolutely speechless watching you sing. They made lot. some great jokes. Um, not at your expense, but you know, th- but they were hilarious talking about you. Yeah. And uh, the comments were very nice about you. Like, it's uh, thank you, dude. This is hopefully so flattering. Hopefully he listens to our podcast now. Hopefully. We should tag him in everything now. Even stuff that has nothing to do with him. <laughs> He's going to get annoyed and I'm not going to be able to Squeaky win. Squeaky wheel gets the oil, man. You're right. Uh, people say shoot your shot and I got a Tommy gun. Uh, you definitely do. Yes. So, <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, <laughs> but it's... It's fucking awesome because I didn't think it was crazy. Uh, at the end of episode two, I'm at, I'm the last person to be featured, and I was screaming. I'm still in shock to just to know that someone that you look up to you should, has like, said your name it. and has like a ha, what was that? You should take a picture of it and post it. I think I want I want to post like the clip, but it's Patreon. I was gonna say stuff. I don't know if you can clip a Patreon thing because it's exclusive content. Yeah. So I might take a picture. I do have a picture ready that I might post and tag them in. But how cool is it that he knows your name, bro? That and he knows my name. Obviously, he's definitely had a conversation about you. Yes, at least that. A hundred percent. He knows my face. He's seen my face. And he's when heard he got a voice. call back. Yes. Uh, I Now I'm just freaking out. Like, uh, what, What's your second song going to be? No clue. I have to think about it and have to be strategic about Sing it. Sing the ICBTB theme. <laughs> Make it two minutes long. Um, just make it the 30 second add a bridge. and then be like nah I'm just kidding here's the real song <laughs> the, by that's that, my podcast check it out by that time they'll like turn it off at second 25 if he likes you I don't think he would no I think he'd watch enough All of, of it. it I think he would watch up to 5 minutes of you yes maybe up to 5 minutes uh, yeah I bet you he and that's would, pushing he it he would I give think. you and that's being very nice I don't know Bobby Lee at all but I would say I think he would give you 5 minutes before That'd be fucking awesome. If you were really, really good, I'm sure he could give you 10. Yes. How, how's your tight 10? Have you been working on your tight 10? Uh, because now's the time, bro. Right now is it. If he just asked me to do stand up. What if he FaceTimed you right now and was like, can you do a five minute spot right now? Yeah. It's all improv, Bobby, but here you go. Give me a topic. And just then, pull your wiener out and do it. Nope. And maybe Bobby is kind of a weird dude and that might work. Bobby is like me and you put together. Probably. Not looks wise. No. Well, maybe. A little bit. Huh. Your size, my skin color. Ooh, not size. He's much smaller than I am. But your skin color for sure. Yeah. I'd be like a a bigger Bobby Lee. Definitely if if our eyes mixed together would be his eyes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Are your eyes more Asian than mine? I definitely have almond-shaped eyes, that's for sure. Yeah, and people like almonds and people like your eyes, I'm assuming. Well, the world may never know. And I don't mean to blow up your... your ego more. (laughs) Blow up your eyes in Photoshop. (laughs) But... That would be... um, Yeah, but... But People your, like I've, you, dude. I'm People so surprised. People like your look. I, I have no idea why. I keep hearing like a... Can you tell me who these people are then? Not on air. Oh, man. Well, you should tell me because it would be great for my self-esteem. Yeah, it's... My what? therapist says I need help on that. It's crazy that when you get these compliments, your your reactions are so interesting. You're what like... What are my reactions? Oh, I didn't even know. You that think... girl liked me? I Yeah. But... Wait, what did she say about me? I do like that. And I do want to hear it like three times. And me not having any pressure of trying to impress anyone at a party. I'm just like sipping on a drink on the sidelines and just watching it go down. Uh, you know, to be a fly on the wall, my friend. It's like watching like a, a basketball game. I'll be like, oh, well, he missed that pass. Well, oh, he all ooped that. <laughs> oh, well, so so I suck at defense, but I can finish is what you're saying? It depends. I mean, it's just like, like who who's a mediocre, not mediocre, who's like a... A fifth pick uh, NBA basketball player. Fifth pick? I'd say fifth pick. Of the pick. first round? Sure. Someone that like basketball people will know, but not your average Joe. Okay. So somebody who like sucks, but is still on a winning team. I want to say- LeBron James? <laughs> wow. You're making a lot of enemies on this episode, dude. Uh, you can talk about his hairline next? Anyway, it's great. It's great. It's there. 
just it's... to piss the other people off. <laughs> like, now we're confused. <laughs> Do you like him or not? I hate everybody. Um, no, I think I'm like a, I, I am the um, Bobby Bonilla. You know who Bobby Bonilla is? And I'm the average Joe that doesn't really know sports. So this works. Mm. Who is Bobby Bonilla? Uh, I believe Bobby Bonilla, Bobby Bonilla was uh, on the New York Mets. And part of his contract was even after he stopped playing, the Mets still had to pay him millions of dollars. So he <laughs> retired and for like five years was still getting paid by the Mets. Not a bad gig, dude. Bobby Bonilla sounds like a made up name. <laughs> no, it's, it's I trust you. Real deal, Holyfield. But it sounds like a made up name. I'm more like the Pete Rose. I like to gamble on myself. <laughs> okay. All right. So Pete actually, Rose, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> it's hard making this sports to. And, and this means nothing to you, but this will make a couple of people laugh. Uh, I did see Pete Rose once. I, I, I saw Pete Rose in real life in Vegas, which I know that sounds like I saw water in the ocean, but um, you know, hey, yeah. sometimes you see a horse at the ranch. I'm trying to make it seem like something that I could relate to. Pete Rose was an incredible baseball player and became a coach and then was banned from the Hall of Fame because he was caught. Um, betting on his team. Oh, oh, and so he was banned from the MLB for life, even though cheaters like Barry Bonds and A Rod and shit get to be in the Hall of Fame, even though they take steroids and shit. And Pete Rose only ever bet on his team to win. It's just bullshit. I don't know. Who are the athletes that took all, all took steroids? So we got Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Jose okay. Canseco, everybody. Everybody took steroids, bro. Who's the big brown guy on the Giants? Barry Bonds. The the other big brown guy, more recent. They call him the panda or some shit like that? Oh, uh, Pablo, Pablo Sandoval. Pablo Sandoval? Yeah. Oh, okay. Does he I, take he's not a, no, he's just a big boy. Okay. That's the other thing, though. Pablo Sandoval's like a great baseball player. That man's fat as fuck. The greatest baseball player in history is Babe Ruth, right? Yes. And he smoked cigars and ate hot dogs in the drug out, in the dugout. Which is fuck crazy, out of here. That's not an athlete. Dude. Baseball players are not athletes. Maybe pitchers are. I would love to play basketball or play baseball with me, you notice. All cigars and uh Cigars and hot dogs? Yes. <laughs> Dude, we'd be dying, bro. You know what the number one drink in the dugout is in the MLB? What? Beer. Wow, these people are just bloated and playing. Number two is Gatorade. Number three is water. Really? Yeah. In that order? Yep. You would think it would be water, Gatorade, then maybe no, beer. No, bro. They're fucked up. Like these now. Wipe, this is wipe, now. Yeah, these white boys are fucked up in those dugouts, bro. Holy shit. Okay, what other sports do athletes play when on a substance? I think a lot of football players play high on marijuana. I think that's pretty common, but if they get caught, they get busted pretty bad. Oh. Um, like, do they get tested frequently? They can be. So they just have to get clean pee. And generally, from what I hear, again, I'm not a professional football player, um, you, you get a random drug test, but uh, it's more like, hey, you're getting a random drug test tomorrow. Like, oh, fuck, I can't it's, drink that yeah. much cranberry unless, juice and piss. Unless it's like you failed two tests already, and then they're like, hey, man, we showed up. It's not like USADA. If you're an MMA fighter, they show up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. three months before your fight just to take your piss to make sure that you're not doping. Holy um, shit. They're very serious about it. Um, um, hockey players? I think th I don't know enough about hockey, but I would assume their culture is um, – drinking beer as well yeah those motherfuckers get aggressive so i can i would think the healthiest athletes what basketball players yeah you're running back and forth and back and forth it's active yeah. unless you're benched I, it's and completely I know a active. lot of them i know some of them do do use the marijuana sometimes but they clearly don't use it all the time or pregame because you wouldn't be able to run up and down the court for 72 minutes if you did really though but like the football only, you get a lot of breaks the only issue with smoking marijuana would just be like what you know smoking all the time would do to your lungs the and so actual your cardio. smoke of it yeah yeah in terms of like the effects of it maybe it could create some sort of like a very infinitesimal lag like you know if you but you're a professional athlete i don't think it, if you're a professional athlete i don't think it makes a difference your senses point. are sharpened yeah like it, it should be secondhand nature. this guy is this lebron james for example is a height is like the perfect specimen of a human in every aspect, except for his hairline. Um, but <laughs> but you know what I mean. So like smoking a little bit of pot, I don't think would like even if it does, it makes him like just a little bit better than the average person. You know, I yeah, don't know. I don't know how it works for superstars. Matt yeah. Barnes smoked a lot of pot and he won a championship for the Warriors. Isn't it crazy to think about these? He says he was high for every game. These athletic superstar stars are they're our modern day superheroes is, is crazy. The they're fact not that just our super, there are myths. There are Hercules and our Achilles. I think about that all the time, man. Think about like in Greece, there, the people that kids grew up wanting to be was Achilles and Hercules and Odysseus. And we grew up wanting to be Michael Jordan. And, and I wanted to be Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco and shit yeah. like that. You know, these are people that are godlike. 
yeah. in the field in which they specialize in, I, right? Definitely, definitely. You fucking you 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 lived, breathed, and spoke baseball, and you went on and did it, and just got good at that really one thing. It doesn't matter if you suck at math. It doesn't matter if you suck at writing. If you suck at speaking, but it doesn't matter if you, matter can, if you even suck at running. But you can slam that ball out of the park. And if you could slam and you can that ball, walk around the bases at that point, fat fuck Pablo Sandoval. Millions of dollars for Mr. Sandoval. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. And teachers can't it. get hundred thousand dollars a year which is why there's so much <laughs> let's take it back to the politics still really flawed with this country man i mean like these just teachers like, do pay taxes rich people jesus yes if we could just get one percent of te- of the one percent to just provide or just like if you have a six-figure income that's more than 500 uh-huh. maybe pay your taxes this just in uh, people from the Midwest and uh, a lot of people that don't agree with our stuff just stopped listening to our podcast. They're not making the Midwest. There's nobody in the Midwest making six figures. No, over five hundred. No. Okay, what's a different location of? Uh, that's Hollywood. We're losing our Hollywood elites. Too. All the Hollywood elites and the New York Wall like, Street that's elites. That's like when people were freaking thing. out about Biden's tax plan. It's like, bro, don't worry. You don't make. You're not making enough money to fall under that. Dude, don't, I love those memes. Don't those worry. Memes, the, that one meme of a dirty ass microwave. If your microwave looks like this, don't, don't worry, worry about, about Biden's tax plan. <laughs> yeah. And it's just lasagna splattered all over the walls. It's the funniest fucking thing. It's so funny. Or if they say, if your ceilings look like this and it's the popcorn it's ceilings. popcorn ceilings. <laughs> Fuck yes, bro. Like, don't worry about the tax plan. Oh my gosh. Fuck yeah. One of the best memes. Some of the best memes just have derived Honestly, from current day politics. I, I will say this right now. You know, we had some great comedy come out of the Trump administration. And and I know I'm, I'm probably not going to be on the I'm offending more people saying this, but we are about to hit with Biden being president four great years of comedy. Do you think that that man's not going to be spouting off comedic gold and unintentional? At least Trump oh, yeah. knows he's saying the asshole thing and making a joke. Oh, man. Did Biden the other day, like, ended a tweet with period in all caps, like a 16 year old black girl. Does he not have a. Uh, like an advisor, like a social media advisor. I think he only has social media advisors. That's the other thing. So it's like either either Biden has the brain of like a 16-year-old girl or he just has no control of Twitter and is just like, yeah, post anything. Honestly, though, not a bad idea for your numbers to have someone that is hip and really intact with social media. To, to pretend just, to be you. Yeah, just like, okay, this is what Biden would say, but let me just tweak it yeah, well, a little bit. Trump's out here doing it straight from his thumbs, bro. Yeah, he has no advisors. It's just himself. Hilarious. It's just himself. It's crazy. He's a fucking he's a comedian, dude. He's a he's a reality star. And it's it's bittersweet because of like because a lot of the It's over now. It's okay. It's over now. For just a couple more months and we'll never ever ever have to listen to that old senile piece of shit New York slum lord motherfucker ever again. You don't think he's going to still try to do stuff you know how old he's gonna be if he tries to run again in 2024 he doesn't care man he doesn't care but he won't have the mental facilities to do it that hasn't stopped him now like he's even had now. he has mental facilities right now despite what people say he's still pretty sharp but in four years he's not going to be sharp anymore here's man. what i'm hoping for what and this is going to be the most poetic justice to the trump family ever is i hope he doesn't leave the white house and i hope they have to drag him out i hope the military has to go in there and pull him out kicking and screaming dragging his nails into the carpet just like he did to all of those fucking families on coney island that they kicked out just so they could build a fucking man. amusement park so that his dad can make millions of dollars man. that he gives to his piece of shit son that is now ruining our fucking country i hope to fucking god that how, they pull the military in and pull him out how funny would that coverage be? Though? That is poetic justice for the Trump family, bro. Would Honestly, be crazy. Think about how many families they kicked out of their houses. It's just yeah. fair that they get kicked out of theirs. Damn, dude. If they could just get a helicopter hovering over the White House and pull him up by like tie a rope around him, attach it to the whoa, helicopter, whoa, whoa, whoa. and just like, well, no, not like that. Whoa, 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 Kristen. No, we are not like, advocating for the death of the current president. No, I'm not saying death. He's fine. It's I'm wrapped not. around his torso. I still respect the office. I just don't respect the man. Yes, you're right. And it's it's wild. Other countries are looking at America and be like, what, what the fuck is going on? North Korea is like, at least we're not them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Philippines with Duterte is, uh, is, is even saying, at least we're not them. <laughs> they're not allowed to see what's actually happening here. Because uh, their social media, their media is blocked. Is blocked. Super blocked. Damn. So dude. is ours, but at least we pretend. Like, it, this has been the most up and down episode yeah you want to hear this about is, our dating lives this is the best highly go. relevant episode actually i've had a great time dude it's gonna get better we have an episode coming out on thursday yes very 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 special episode extremely special we will not say the guest yet because 
you are going to be, but it's going to be a good episode. Yes. Um, I, think I can't wait one, for it. I think it's going to be one of our highest downloads. Probably, dude. We'll tell you the movie so you can watch it. Is it on demand? I know it's it, you. it was for a while on Netflix. No, you're going to have to pay for it now. I had to watch Brutal. it off of Amazon unless you have the VHS or remaster DVD I, for it. We have the DVD at my house. And we have the VHS here at the Balthazar it's home. It's also on TV a lot. In the Very next two frequently. months... It's the day. It's November twenty third today. We don't like to stamp the days, but whatever. It's November twenty third currently. Yeah. For the next sixty days, it'll be on television. Yes, um, and I Into wouldn't January. even be surprised if within the next month or so they'll throw that shit on Disney Plus. Would not it, be surprised. Disney does own it now. So yeah, they'll, they're probably just waiting for the right week, and it's oh. probably gonna pop up, right? I bet you it will be on Disney Plus. They're in being December. strategic. They're trying to make money, dude. Disney's trying to make using, money. Look at the big brain on Brad. Hey, Name that that's movie. me, dude. I told you. I'm on fire today. Shooting my shots with this Tommy gun. Oh, do, 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 do. You have never heard a Tommy gun shoot. Uh, slow motion. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> if I was a sound effects designer, you're a Foley artist. <laughs> All right, so we just got the sound effects from the new Foley artist down the street. Here's uh, the new shootout. Okay. Play. Do, 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 do. Pause. I'm sorry. That's the sound we have for the laser guns? Yeah. I mean that's all he had to offer. Here, let's let's uh let's double play the one m- for the bazooka. Pew. And that's what we got. I love it. Double double his money. Double his money. He is fantastic. <laughs> and that's our improv scene. <laughs> that is, guys. That is. You're welcome. You did get it after all. Um Yeah, dude, Thursday we watch Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way. Starring Sinbad. And Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Phil Hartman, rest in peace. And Tom Hanks' current wife. Rita Wilson is her name. Yes. You don't have to boil women down to their husband's names. You know that? I just forgot her name for a second, dude. I was about to say his ex-wife's name. No, it's his current wife. Yeah, I know. I said They live uh, in Greece now. I was doing research, and I was doing more research on his ex-wife as opposed to Rita Wilson. Who's his ex-wife? Something. Uh, she died. Oh, brutal. Rest in peace. Um, I was doing a lot of research on The Sun. Oh, from the movie. you mean uh, Jake, what's his last name? Taylor or something like that. Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker. Who- Poor kid. His life was just destroyed. The after internet the ruined Menace. him. His high school, the internet, that movie just destroyed his life. Paranoid schizophrenic. Yes. Yeah, man. We'll talk about it on the next episode. And then episode. Phil Hartman got murdered by... His wife. Cocaine and Zoloft. What a mix. She was on a bunch of shit. Shot him three Cocaine times. Cocaine and Zoloft. Yeah. In between the eyes. And one in the throat, one, and in, one the in the chest. Did we read the same Wikipedia page? I think so. There's oh, only right. one Wikipedia. Yeah. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Okay, bye. Yeah.